Uh, who do we have there? Hello, Yusuf. This is Paul. I'm Hi there, Paul. How do you do? I'm very good, thank you. I'm certainly not for Israel. Of course not. <laughs> I see oh. the background. Britain deserves better the Workers' Party. It certainly deserves better than Labour or 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 the Conservatives or indeed uh, Reform. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> Nigel or, Farage. Or even several other smaller parties I could mention that we recently defeated in the election. Indeed. Indeed. Well, you, we, 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 I don't know too much about British politics, but we have been following it, especially over the years, uh, particularly during the Blair regime. And I can tell you, we, you certainly have our support uh, here in South Africa and uh, indeed on, on some of the other platforms in the United Kingdom. Well, but go ahead, Paul. I certainly have your, I, I support your, your, your excellent exposition on the situation in, in Gaza. Uh, I've just been watching with, with interest over my dinner. But I, I don't want you to get me confused with some sort of friend of Israel. Um, no, of course not. In my flyer when I was campaigning, I support a one-state solution in what I called the Holy Land, which I suggest is the best marketing term for a united state. You could call it Israel-Palestine, Palestine-Israel. You can call it the Promised Land. But the Holy Land, it would unite the entire of the area including the spring of the River Jordan, which isn't actually in Israel. It's in Lebanon. It's eight kilometers north of Mount Hermon. You can see the book above my head called Karsak Research, as in Karsak, as in Hamas. That's a Sumerian word that means mm. head of the valleys. And that's the, <coughs> the spring of the River Jordan in Lebanon. Um, and once I believe that is united with Israel in the... It already, almost already is, because as you probably know, the uh, the area around the Golan and the area around southern Lebanon and the north has been pretty much evacuated already because of the number of strikes there have been, um, missiles and airstrikes in that area, um, just which are probably going to kick off a war very soon if you've seen the developments militarily in that area. Um, so I've been campaigning with the Workers' Party, as you can see, to um, uh, well make a voice for, for British politics, for working class politics over here. Um, and I've been out today on the, um, the Palestinian uh, cavalcade around Coventry, uh, where 10, 20 cars, I lost count, I think, were parading around Coventry, waving the flat Palestinian banners to rapturous applause. We had, kid, you know, the leaders of this group were on bikes giving out small flags to kids who were waving them out of the, the, you know, the, the, their homes at us. And I have never seen such a rally to a sub cause since 1980, 1980, whenever Coventry last won the FA Cup. <laughs> did, did Coventry ever win the FA Cup? I think it was 1987 when I was 12, and they all had flags out in their windows, even in Bolsall Common, in the village where I lived near Coventry. I can't recall that. I, was, I must have been about six or something, but I, I thought... I know it was Nottingham Forest in the 1980s. That's a bit of a shift, but I didn't know Coventry City ever won the FA Cup. Um, I mean, following English football. I mean, we, 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 we grew up following English football. So if you talk about Gary Lineker and Paul Gascoigne and uh, Stuart Pierce and, you know, uh, Shira and all of, you know, they, 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 were, they were kind of household names in the South African, um, you know, and context. Southgate, 